Okay, let's start with our largemouth bass ecosystem. So we're going to start at the top. I've got my largemouth bass. I've got the minnow. I've got zooplankton. And I have algae. Okay, so what I'm going to do is add my arrows. And remember, I really want to change my color. Hold on. Remember that our arrows show the flow of energy. So they're going from the algae, pointing at the zooplankton, from the zooplankton, pointing at the minnow, and the minnow, pointing at the largemouth bass. And if I'm going to add labels, I've got my producer. So he's getting his energy right here from the sun. I've got a primary consumer, a secondary consumer, and my largemouth bass is my tertiary consumer. Okay, so we see this is my before ecosystem, before disturbance. I have four species. So let's see what happens with the disturbance. So my disturbance is that the top predator is removed from the ecosystem. So we can see a couple pictures down here. This is my lake with no bass in it. This one has bass. Here is my one with bass. Here is without. And we can see that there's a lot of our secondary consumers and there's virtually no producers here. They've basically eaten it down to the bare rocks. Versus here, we've got a few secondary consumers and lots and lots and lots of producers. So remember, this is the base of our food web right here. And since they get their energy directly from the sun, the ecosystem can support the, most of them. So let's take a closer look. So here's the side with bass. Here's the side without. That's hard to see, but over here you can see there's no algae and no large predators. So let's diagram our ecosystem changes. So I start down here, I've got algae to zooplankton, up to the minnow, and my bass. But, let me change my color here. I have no more bass. So my minnow population goes up. They have no predators. But because they eat the zooplankton, they go down, so they have a negative effect, positive effect, and then my algae has no predators. So this is gonna go up. Now I only have two to three species. You can argue that the zooplankton is on its way out if it keeps getting eaten by the minnows. So let's look at this student sample. So we're going to go ahead and highlight first what is evidence, and then we'll go back through and highlight what is the reasoning. So our claim, our question, is there a change in biodiversity? Yes, there was a loss of biodiversity. So let's look for evidence. Now evidence are specific observations. They could be numbers, but they're not interpretations. They're just specific things that you can collect. So, in the lake ecosystem, we lost most of our largemouth bass. As we read this, we see that the population of minnows increased significantly, led to a decrease in zooplankton. There will be nothing left in the lake except algae, since they get their energy directly from the sun. When the bass are present, they're present. There are four different species in the food web. When the bass have been removed, there are only three, soon to be one or two.
Okay, so those are my pieces of evidence. Everything that's left, we can highlight as the reasoning. This is explaining these pieces of evidence and how they prove that there was a loss of biodiversity. So when I look, I see limiting the population of the prey, that the largemouth bass are a keystone species with the top-down control over the rest of the food chain, Largemouth bass maintains minnows at their carrying capacity. Uh, we see that the minnows contain or control the zooplankton in the predator-prey relationship. Without the zooplankton, overabundance of the algae. Algae contains the most energy, so without anyone to consume them, they no longer have a limiting factor. And that the algae get their energy directly from the sun. Okay, so now we see that we've got specific pieces of evidence and then reasoning that supports how that evidence that the population of largemouth bass was decreased how that supports the idea that it was a loss of biodiversity so let's go back to one we're familiar with and that is the tide pool so we see in our tide pool this is before starfish removal we have 16 different species one year after the removal, only eight, so one year, only eight of 16 original species remain. Five years after, we have just the mussel. So I want you to go ahead and write what is the evidence of biodiversity loss and then what is the reasoning that you can support that your evidence does prove that there was a loss of biodiversity when we had a removal of the starfish. Okay, so let's look here at another student sample. So at the top we see our claim. Yes, there was a loss of biodiversity. Here is our evidence. specific things you can observe. There were 16 species found there, and there were only eight after one year, and one species found after five years. As we look down here, we have our reasoning. Which explains how this loss of biodiversity happened. To explain that the disturbance did in fact cause a loss of biodiversity. So here's one for you to do. So this is <clears throat> a kind of different experiment. This one is not a keystone species. And what we're going to look at is a specific ecosystem in Australia. So we have the she oak, which is our producer, and it's kind of like a pine tree. We have two different primary consumers. We have the glossy black cockatoo, whose only food source is this she oak tree. Fun fact, they only eat these, no these nuts with their left foot. Their predator is the possum in Australia who eats the eggs. Same thing for the finch. Now I wanna point out when we talk about biodiversity, cause that's gonna be our same question, that we have three different levels. We have ecosystem diversity. So is there a lot of different habitats? Are there trees? Are there lakes? Are there rivers? Are there fields? How many different types of ecosystems are there within the community that we're talking about? There's species diversity, which is what we've been talking about mostly, is just how many species are there, the number of species. And then the one I want to focus on is genetic diversity. This is the number of individuals of a species. So it's not just how many species you have, it's also how many of that species there are. Now we're in a small tiny island called Kangaroo Island which suffered massive wildfires at the start of 2020 which wiped out almost all of the she oak trees on the island. So when we look at the kind of effect this has, so let me draw my arrows here, we see that most of the she oak trees have gone. So we have a loss of genetic diversity. 
because most of the she-oaks are gone, the glossy black cockatoo on the island is now near extinction. There's approximately 13 birds left out of the 200 that were there before the fire. The possums eat many other things, so they're mostly fine. I didn't put an arrow to show any change for them. And the finch suffers a small population loss, but not a huge one because they also have other food sources. So I put the arrow, the size of the arrow, to correlate with how much of a effect there was on the population. So pretty big effect on the she-oak, huge effect on the glossy black cockatoo, and a small effect on the finch, no effect on the possum. Now you're gonna go ahead and come up with the evidence and the reasoning for this change. So was there a loss of biodiversity with the disturbance.